Horror with your host with the most Jennifer as always. Welcome back. So we are continuing our Nightmare on Elm Street's uh, franchise review. We are continuing with Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3. Dream Warriors, uh, pretty much universally across the board, is probably like uh, the most fan favorite of the series and probably of a lot of sequels, no matter what franchise you're talking about, uh, just kind of across the board. Just saying, just saying. So the events of, actually, hang on a second. Let's go through our cast of people that are in this. Excuse me. Let me grab my notes. We have Robert England, obviously returning as Freddy Krueger. Heather Langenkamp is reprising her role after uh, the first one. Uh, awesome to have her back in this one, let me tell you. We have Craig Watson, Patricia Arquette, which was this, I believe this was her first like film role, so uh, quite a debut. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Ken Sagos, Rodney Eastman, Jennifer Rubin, Bradley Gregg, Ira Heldon, Lawrence Fishburne, who is actually credited as Larry Fishburne. And I know this is not her first movie role, but it was one of his earlier roles. So we have Penelope Sudro. We have John Saxon returning for a small part. Priscilla Pointer, who uh, is also, a lot of you I know know this, is the mother to Amy Irving, whom both of those ladies, as we know, starred as a mother-daughter duo in the original Carrie. So, yeah. And then we also have Brooke Bundy, who is actually the mother to Tiffany Helm, who played Violet in uh, Friday the 13th Part 5. So there's some of your little fun facts. So... Dream Warriors, Dream Warriors, continuing sort of the uh, tradition, especially with the second one, kind of continuing a trend of having some sort of social commentary in this movie, which we will obviously uh, talk about as we go along and everything. But this is, this movie takes place five, or no, I'm sorry, six years after the events of the first one. The second one, never even mentioned, uh, I mean, obviously, second one never really is talked about anywhere in like any of the uh, sequels or anything of uh, actually the first three I feel like aren't really acknowledged as much uh, going forward but hey whatever whatever so and this takes place at um, a psychiatric ward uh, or I should say a like mental asylum of uh, basically, or mental uh, health ward, Weston Hills. This is the first introduction to Weston Hills. And we also have the uh, introduction to Hypnosil, which Nancy is taking to suppress dreams. This is the first movie that brings that into play, which I don't think we really actually see again until Freddy vs. Jason, if memory serves. I could be wrong on that, but I'm just kind of like thinking... I think the only other time we really hear about it is in Freddy vs. Jason, but hey, whatever, I could be wrong. Um, and I do like that they have the hypnosil in here because I feel like it is a little bit of a, a nod to the first one where Nancy is seeing the doctor or whatever and she kind of is like, isn't there like a pill or something that I can take where, you know, I, I don't you know, I don't dream or anything. So I kind of like that they did take that little, that one little line and, you know, maybe it had nothing to do with it, but, you know, I like that they did tie it in with that and everything. And Hypnosil, a little backstory on Hypnosil, it is, we come to find out, is a, is an exp experimental drug not even approved yet by the FDA and everything. So, yeah, yeah. But she's still taking everything because, you know, she, you know, doesn't want to have to deal with Freddy again and stuff. So, yeah. So, she is like this, a, uh, a basically a hotshot rookie as the one doctor, uh, Neil, pretty much refers to her as uh, before he meets her. And is, you know, specializes in dreams and everything, which makes sense. I mean, obviously, she took this horrible experience that she went through years ago with her friends and everything, turned it around uh, made it into a positive and wanted to go ahead and help other people, help conquer Freddy, get stronger herself and everything, which I like, uh, which I really like. I think that's a, a, you know, I think this is why Nancy as a character is 
such a beloved character and long-lasting uh, character in any franchise. And thank God, thank goodness for uh, Heather Langenkamp because she just does a wonderful job with this character. She really does. And yeah, like, ugh, right? But yeah, no, so she takes that, you know, she wants to help other kids and everything. She comes to us in Hills and, you know, she doesn't really realize, I think, initially of the fact that these kids are actually uh, dreaming about Freddy or anything, but she might have an inkling. She still wants to help, you know, in any sort of way. She's always, I almost feel like, and I don't know if this has really ever been mentioned before by people, but it's almost like she's almost on the hunt for Freddy and everything. So, you know, she's kind of like, okay, where, where is he going to be at? Like, you know, so yeah, yeah. You know, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. And this movie too is also sort of the, uh, I feel like, I know this has been said before that this is sort of like the answer to teen suicide and everything. And I know that there were quite a few, movies being released uh, during the 80s and everything. I mean, even now too, but you saw sort of a trend of like teen suicide movies and everything, like The River's Edge. There was, you know, quite a few of them were and everything, but I think that was kind of the point where people started to realize that, oh, you know what? Teenagers might have some problems. They might be depressed. They might be thinking about, you know, killing themselves. They might be, you know, experiencing this and that and whatnot. So this kind of was starting to shed some light on that, you know, some more, you know, like I said at the beginning of the video, a lot of social commentary is once again in this, uh, in this sequel here, and I have to give credit to The Nightmare on Elm Street, because as I'm sort of vaguely thinking of the other movies, you know, this, I know like other movies, you know, uh, like Friday the 13th, you can kind of say, oh, it's like the Reagan type of influence and everything, but this one definitely, with each movie more or less does have some sort of social commentaries involving you know kids among those age groups and everything so I mean props to them we definitely saw it very much in the first one very much in the second one we see it again here so kudos to this franchise for not only being a great series but well for better or for worse a, a pretty decent series so yeah so yeah so this was kind of like the answer to hey you know what yeah you know, teens might actually have a, you know, might actually have struggles and everything themselves. We don't really give them credit for it. Uh, you know, and, you know, Freddy, once again, kind of is, you know, I, I was making points of how Freddy in the second one in Freddy's Revenge could have sort of been uh, looked at as the, like, AIDS threat or coming of age and uh, finding out your own sexual identity and everything. In this one, Freddy definitely seems to be uh, sort of, could be looked at as uh, sort of the answer to these sort of problems. Like, oh, you know, like, yeah, it's it, more than just, okay, some guy's coming after them and killing them. It's, you know, we actually see this, these kids, and especially in this one, it's being more acknowledged of parents aren't believing their kids that something's wrong. There could be something more than just, obviously, Freddy. Obviously, Freddy is the main focal point, but... You know, there could be something bigger, you know, and parents just kind of, you know, wipe it off of like, okay, whatever, like, you're just overreacting, you're emotional, it's hormones, it's puberty, it's this, and it's like, no, like, there could be, like, actual problems and everything, and we do see this with, like, with uh, each one of the characters and everything, like, Jennifer Rubin's character... Uh, a recovering drug addict and everything and it's like what well, like you know you, you wouldn't really think like oh kids kids don't have drug problems or whatever well you know what newsflash some kids do you know and I, I I know that she's gotten a lot of fan mail over the years and a lot of acknowledgement for her character uh of people saying like oh my god like that character just huge influence for me has helped me to kick drugs and everything because it's like you know, your character was so strong. It was always like, fight, 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 fight. You know, and it's like, I didn't want to turn out the same way. I didn't want to die from a drug overdose or my my Freddy Krueger. You know, I didn't want to die from my Freddy Krueger, which was drugs. You know, and another character that I do, I personally have to kind of uh, think. And, uh, you know, I, I've definitely grown more appreciative of this character growing up is Penelope Sudro's character. Uh, because this really was kind of like one of the first movies 
um, that I remember seeing, and even like around the time, even now that I when I watch this film, her character with like the self harm and everything, with like the cigarette butts, the lit cigarettes, and putting them out on her arm. Obviously, I know you know she's trying to stay awake, stay awake, and everything, and not fall asleep. But, you know, it's kind of like that's, you know, her sort of Freddy Krueger. It's like she doesn't want to have to deal with Freddy Krueger tonight. She doesn't want to, you know, she's got, she's so overwhelmed with, like, problems and stuff that she's, you know, doing that. For me, like, if if Penelope Sudro ever sees this video by chance, uh, thank you. And the writers to this uh, movie, too, Wes Craven, May He Rest His Soul and stuff, Thank you for that character, because uh, my I myself have uh, battled for years with with self harm myself. So just to see a character like that, and I know she's not the only character. I'm sure she's probably not the first character. There's certainly been characters since this movie uh, dealing with self harm and everything. But ah, uh, thank you. Just like little things like that. Back in the '80s, once again, you know, this is what I'm saying with like you know, like in my second. Uh, uh, review or my review for the second one where you know they're always they always seem to be just like a a heartbeat ahead of certain like trends and uh I shouldn't say trends but discussing different things different issues and everything so thank you to that I'm just saying I'm just saying um and the characters too like the deaths and everything uh from this point forward I feel were a little more like character oriented and what I mean by that is the deaths seem not always uh going forward but most of the time it seemed to be uh the death related somehow to the character for example uh, Pen Penelope Sudro's character wants to be an actress so what happens Freddie shoves her head into a tv got her big break uh, once again, Jennifer Rubin's character was a recovering addict and everything. She's always got that temptation. She's always going to have that temptation. What happens? Uh, Freddy, Freddy literally puts his little hypodermic needles into her arm, overdoses her and everything. We see it further uh, later on with, uh, you know, are you, still even in this uh, uh, movie with, like, Bradley Gregg's character, loving marionettes and everything, always loves making, like, marionettes and everything. What happens? You know, we get the uh, the tendons coming out, the veins and everything, and he's, you know, Freddy's, you know, basically controlling him like a marionette and everything. And then even with, like, later uh, sequels and everything, uh, like, actually, part five, I, or no, part four, I'm sorry, part four, I believe, with the um, cockroach scene, like, the one girl is terrified of cockroaches. What happens? She pretty much turns into a... a, a cockroach and everything and just you know other deaths like similar to that and everything so that definitely you know I like that because it made the uh you know you kind of wanted to see like how far they would go with certain deaths or what they would do with certain deaths like okay how are they gonna do this type of death and everything even though you kind of knew what type of death it was gonna be or what was gonna happen it's like how are they gonna execute it so they did it right they kind of knew we're on to the whole like death scenes and everything and how people really kind of looked forward to seeing how these people were going to die and everything. So props to them. Props to them. So this movie actually also too is really good about the, uh, like the teen bonding experience. Cause I mean, I remember being a teen and stuff and maybe not always get, getting along with people. Some, but sometimes something, a little something happens or you might have a little discussion. You might stand up for someone and you know what? You just needed that little bit of bonding and boom, you know, like, you, you're you cool, you know, you got a, a mutual respect, you know, and this movie definitely does play on that, like, all these kids are stressing out and everything, at times, or, like, fighting and everything, because that's pretty much what Freddy wants, but they also, you know, are kind of there for each other, they're trying to save each other and all this, so that way Freddy doesn't get them, like, you know, the, we're gonna be stronger together, than being uh being separated so yeah yeah and then the dream powers too by the way uh the dream powers obviously were in this one i feel like they did kind of carry it uh with the following uh like they did carry it on to the following sequel especially with like um Kristen's character and everything but then after that I feel like they just kind of like forgot about it and it was kind of like eh, whatever which is a little unfortunate but 
I think that ride would have gotten it even more goofy than what the series kind of became, but whatever. That's just me. That's just me. And by the way, we are introduced to Amanda Krueger for the first time, getting a little bit of backstory. Yeah, this is another reason why this is a great sequel, because it's introducing new characters, obviously. Got some, you know, former characters that we absolutely love, making us love these new characters because we see how passionate, like, Nancy is with her, with these uh, kids and everything, these patients. And, yeah, and then, uh, you know, we we are introduced to Amanda Krueger, Freddie's mother, and some backstory on them and everything. Uh, you know, we learned that Amanda Krueger was left, accidentally left, locked in over the like the holiday weekend or something and all these mad crazy men raped her hundreds of times like getting raped once horrific hundreds of times that's gonna mess you up and i mean honestly that makes sense you're gonna have like a little like twisted ass baby i'm just saying don't rape your nurse i'm just saying come on um, but no, it's, you know, to introduce that sort of mythology kind of, you know, carrying uh, the whole Freddy mythos forward a little bit, not just, you know, well, I mean, I, I was going to say not just the, like, child murder slash uh, molester and everything, but it's like, how did he get there? Like, why was he so messed up? You know, well, we know why now, because he's got some crazy DNA literally floating around in his uh, in his genetics and everything, so, but whatever. But no, this is actually just one of those movies, one of those sequels, like I said at the beginning, just, it seems like it's universally just the most loved in the franchise, number one, but just almost talking about any sort of franchise. Now, I know there are some people who don't like it. I know it would be sacrilegious to, like, say that you don't like Nightmare on Elm Street 3, but hey, you know what? If you don't like it, that's okay. I actually would want to like hear reasons why someone doesn't like this, like this movie. Because I mean, I'm I'm interested in that. I'm just saying, if any of you guys don't actually like Nightmare on Elm Street on number <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street three, uh, let me know in the comments. I do, you know, I really do want to have, like an actual discussion, not just like oh, it's it's freaking stupid. I want I want to hear your thoughts. I genuinely want to hear your thoughts on it. You know, because I'd be curious. I, I'm curious as to why someone might not like the sequel. You know, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, dude. All about positivity. I'm just saying. We need more positivity in this world. I'm just saying. While I talk about horror movies. Anyway. Anyway. But yeah, so there's so many things about this movie. Definitely done right. Uh, you know, like, if you are going to be making a sequel to your movie... Whether it's the first sequel or, like, the 60th sequel, you know, I'm just saying, I'm coming after you, Hellraiser, I'm just saying, or Children of the Corn. I don't even know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But, um, no, if, like, this should be kind of like, you know, sequel 101, you know, of uh, how you do a, an effective sequel to a movie for a franchise what no matter what it is uh you know so take notes like if you guys have done a movie you're gonna get ready to do a sequel take notes on Nightmare on Elm Street 3 I'm just saying I'm just saying but you guys this is uh this is gonna wrap up the uh third installment of Nightmare on Elm Street let me know what you think in the comments about this movie or what the uh or the franchise so far let me know in the comments. I don't know how many times I can tell you. Let me know in the comments. I'm just saying. But anyway, till next time, as always, stay creepy, classy, and a little bit sassy.